So our topic for this presentation is our new feature in 21, PDF tile maps. Um, now in the previous session, we talked about quick sets. And one of the things we set up for a quick set was a tile setup. And we had a little discussion on the PDF tile maps, but this particular topic is gonna be exclusively talking about the PDF tile maps. So I'm gonna start out once again, uh, going through and creating a quick set for tiling. Because the PDF tile map is going to generate information about the tiling setup, we need to have that quick set created. So I'm going to go into Configure Printer, and I'll make a new quick set. I will name this Tiling On, just to make it very simple. And in the lower left corner, of my quick set, I'll go to the advanced button. And then on the left side, you'll notice a section called tiling. So we'll take a look at these conditions here. We've got tile setup. So one of the first things I need to do is activate my tiling. My tiling is going to be engaged. I turn that checkbox on. So when our files are going to be coming through this quick set, and typically if the file size is larger, then our roll size of media or our imageable page size that we're going to be printing on, it's going to automatically set up tile panels. And um, that's going to be to the maximum size of the media that we're working with. We do have an option to submit tiles as individual jobs. And so in that case, in the background in the rip queue here, we would see a job for column one, for example, for column two, for column three. Um, if we do not activate that checkbox, we'll have one job which will consist of all of the tile panels. And then, of course, we've got controls in this menu. If I did want to specify my number of columns, so if I knew this is a file size and my final media size, and I could say, okay, I want this to all be a certain size, I can tell this, well, I'll have this set up for five even columns or seven even columns. And we can do the same with rows as well. What I'm gonna do is leave these defaults to our maximum tile size that we're working with. Again, we do have overlap. If I indicate an amount of overlap, half inch is our minimum. If I said one inch, when I engage in overlap, I'm going to have image area on my left panel, tile panel, if you will, and my right tile panel that will line up. And then I can use this overlap area as a visual to line up my subject matter. In that case, when I have this repeating image area and I overlap this, what will be the condition that's going to make these two tile panels adhere? or stick together. Um, we could be using an adhesive, it could be a heat weld. Uh, if any of these things within our ink set and our welding or our adhesive interfere with that ability to stick together, we could turn on weld overlap and that makes a portion of the overlap non-printing. In other words, we'll be having media to media contact in the case where that ink maybe is, is uh, causing a, some type of a situation where the material won't stick together. So again, completely optional uh, and case by case as you need to have those settings. On the left, back in the tiles, tiling area, I will go into tile marks. And again, I can activate zero line um, tile mark, uh, marks for my crop marks. All of the op, uh, options for the marks are going to be under the gear setting. And this is where I can select the type of mark. If it's gonna be a solid line, black or white, and then we have a one, two, four, eight or 16 pixel thickness. Uh, or if this is going to be a dotted line, and again, we do have line length and gap based on our standard thicknesses, black or white line. 
or we have our third choice of alternative line, which will be black non printing black non printing, which gives the appearance of black, white, black, white. So, um, again, we have the standard thicknesses for that line width. Um, for our choices, and we can control where that mark will print through our file. So all of our marks have the similar type of attributes. Now to our third section, tile map. This is what we're going to be talking about in this particular session. I'm going to activate my tile map. I'm going to turn on generate tile map at rip time. So this is going to activate the feature for our tile maps. The folder location will be a default folder location within the Onyx RIP. Okay, so that's where that's going to automatically go to. There's a folder called Tile Maps, and that's where our Tile Map PDF files will exist. We can select the three dots and browse to a different directory. So if you wanted to choose a different option for where these PDF tile maps should be written, we can do that. I'm also going to turn on the feature to add pages for each tile that I'm working with. I can control my page size, orientation, and again, we've got the image logo. We have an Onyx logo that will be positioned in the lower left corner of this PDF tile map. If you didn't want the Onyx logo, you can say none. If you wanted your own logo, we can go to custom and they'll activate this browsing area. And then we can browse for where our images are. Now I've got this sample folder of a few on its logos. And so I can select uh, the choice that I want here and that's going to be put in that position. This is a 1 image. Position 1 image file to be positioned. So. If you had quite a bit of data you want to put in this image area, you would design that one file to encompass all of those elements. You'll notice the formatting that is supported, TIFF, JPEG, and PNG. Okay, so again, we can make our files up exactly to size. You'll see how this one's gonna look when we go through and investigate and view the um, tile map PDF. You'll see how this file is going to appear. All right, so I'm going to open that one up. And now I've got my PDF tile map activated. The feature generate tile map at rip time. When the file is ripped is when the data will be created. That's when the PDF tile map is going to be written to that folder directory. Now we do have an example where if we needed to generate that while we're just in job editor. So if we open a file in the job editor, we can do that at that moment in time. So I'll show you that coming up here in a moment. So that's my quick set. I'll click OK. Tiling on is my name of the quick set. So now I have that created. OK. I'm going to use that quick set. I'm going to go into open. And I will select my particular tiling on quick set here. And I'll select the file I'm going to work with. I've got this 132 inch wide tile image. And I will open this in job editor. So remember, when I open in job editor, the file, as you'll see, will go into the rip queue. It's going to have a busy status. And that busy status will be representing the fact that the file is opened in job editor. So in the background in my RIP queue, the file is there. It's got a busy status. Really right now, I'm in job editor with the file. I see my automatic tile panels generated. And in the PDF, Tile map PDF folder, I've got my there's there will be no file in there just yet because really we haven't ripped the data quite yet. We've just opened this up into job editor. So I'll show you that. I'm going to go into my folder for my rip. And I'm going to go down here to the bottom tile maps. That's the directory. And you'll notice we don't have anything created just yet. 
Remember, generate tile map at rip time. File comes into the rip, but we opened in the job editor. So it's kind of in this in-between state. Nothing has truly been completely ripped yet. We do have a preview of information. We can alter data in job editor, but nothing has been created quite just yet. So here in the job editor, I can go to my tiling tab. I'll see the controls that I had also set within the quick set, my automatic number of columns or rows, my default tile size, and then I can see in my preview that I have four tile panels. And it's kind of nice to open a file for tiling in Job Editor just to visually evaluate where those tile panels are. Should there be an area, like you look in the lower right corner, where quite possibly it's just too close to the O and Onyx, and this is in the file, <clears throat> you might say, well, I don't really want to make this too tricky for the installation team, and you might move that over just a little bit. We can drag these tile column lines, or if we click in that panel, uh, number four will appear in my column, and I could also change the size here. Um, so again, if I click in column three or column four, I can control the information for that line. So I could also drag that information or I could type a value in. Now we do have in the tabs here our marks that we saw in the quick set, but also the tile map tab. The additional feature here is at the near the very bottom, generate tile map. So I showed you how in my folder, I do not have the tile map made yet. It's gonna generate at the time of ripping and I'm in job editor. However, if I was looking at this tile file job in job editor, and I felt like there's something I have a question about, I would like my supervisor to evaluate this and approve it before I continue and complete this job and print it. I might take a moment now and generate that tile map. So I have an opportunity to push this button and write the file now. I'll do that. Okay, it asks for my directory. I'm gonna to go to that location and now I'll say save. It's generating the tile map. And again, I get a confirmation window, tile map was successfully created. If I go into that folder now, here's my file. And if I open this up, I will see that this information is going to be, I've got six pages. The first page is the overview. So it gives me the job name, the overall size, my number of tiles, and then if I am using an overlap amount, what is the amount? <clears throat> I can see that I've got column one, two, three, and four, and it's all row one. And in the lower left corner, there's my Onyx logo that I positioned. I browsed to it and I, I just told it to go into that location. So there's a default preset location where we can have uh, whatever image we browse to be positioned there. My next page is going to give me a breakdown of those tiles and their sizes. Now in the notes area, if I had entered in notes when I opened my file, let me go into the RIP to show you this. When I said open, in this section, if I typed in any notes, that information would be populated here in this notes area. Now I can still add some note information within job editor or within my file job properties in the root queue. So the notes would be populated here and they could be special instructions that we're identifying for the installation team. You can see each tile panel size. The next page is gonna start to show us each of those tile panels. And we can see the overlap. So this is column one, column two. We can see the overlap and the weld overlap. Column three, and then column four. At any time, 
we want to go back to the very first page, we can click up here at this title, the job name. And you'll see we get a little hand symbol. And if I click, it brings me back to the first page of my document. If I want to quickly go to column three, I could from this menu, first page, I could click anywhere in column three and it puts me into that page. So it's an interactive PDF in that respect. And we're able to email this to the installation team. I told this to be 8.5 by 11 in size. And uh, I have this data now that I can send to the installation team in an email. Um, they can print this out, take it with them. They can just look at it on their phone or some other device. And they can evaluate and see, in fact, where those columns are and what the subject matter is and so forth. So it's a very great tool, a uh, useful tool for the installation team to evaluate. Okay, so that was something that I said, generate tile map. And right when I press that button, this file was written into my folder structure. And this again, again could be because I want my supervisors to evaluate this. I've got a question, I'm in job editor. Before I go any further, I'll stop, generate the PDF tile map, email it to them, they'll take a look, they'll approve it, or they'll comment for changes. And then I can make those such changes and continue on with the job and print the information. So it's a very convenient feature at that moment. Okay, for now, I am going to delete this file out because I do want you to see it being created when we go through to do the rip ripping for the file. Let's see, I will go into my notes section. I want my chat room data. I'm going to put my information in there. And I go through this. When I go through this again, I'll go through that and show that part. Where we're adding in that information. Um, it's one of those, it's one of those things where I didn't do it when we added it in, but we can definitely add that in later and have that information be generated. So I like what I see for my data. I'm going to submit this to the RIP. And now the file is going to come into the RIP, rip this information. And that's where my PDF tile map will be created once this ripping is completed. So keep this in mind that the PDF tile map, the concepts of this is to generate a file, very convenient. Everyone can open up a PDF pretty much these days. Reader is free. We can look at this information, very easy to email and transfer. We can look at this information as an ins installer, installation team, and have a better understanding of what is gonna go into the conditions for this, for setting this particular options up. So this is the situation we've got with working with this. It's a very convenient tool. All right, while that's ripping, I'm going to open up another example. I've got that other file set here for tiling. It's a 72 inch or 74 inch file. I won't open in job editor this time. I will use my quick set. And in my notes, uh, I may say something like, you know, email the tile map. PDF to the installation team or whatever it has to be. I could put some type of note in there. Now I'll bring this file in. And this information is going to generate and in the notes, we'll see that data that I typed in there. Now, even when the file is completed, the waterfall image is completed. I can see all my tile panels on the right to print. When this is completed, I could right click the file and generate a tile map. So for whatever reason, if I didn't have that set, I can create that information or create that information again here. So just to point that out, that's something that I could always generate again here. If I go to my folder structure, I'll see my waterfall tile panel. There's my PDFs, as we saw before. That's my information. And if I look at the sunflower, in this example, as I scroll through my page two, I'll see the notes that I typed in. So the notes are attributed to that section when we're adding in our data. 
job ticketing information notes. And again, I can review and see my column information. And this is one of those examples. I didn't open this in job editor. So really it would have benefited me to not give my installation team this small, less than five inches wide tile panel. I could have made this into three even pieces or something to that effect. Okay. So in the case of my first file where I did not have anything in the notes section, if I double click anywhere on the job, or if I right click and go to job properties, if I go into the job ticket section, this is where I can type in some notes. So I can say something like um, attach tile map PDF. I'm just putting something different than what I said before. And then again, if I right click and say generate tile map, there's my information. I can even browse for a different image if I should want to or say no logo. I can tell this directory where to write this information. I'm just going to put a uh, two behind it and then we'll see our generation number. And now if I take a look at my folder structure, there's my file. And in this example, you'll see the comment attached tile map PDF or whatever your comment is. So even if we did omit a comment, we can always add that in with job properties in the RIP queue and then generate that tile map again, or PDF tile map again. Okay, let's see. So these files are relatively small. We're able to email them to our, our installation team and they can work on this information. Again, that's the PDF tile maps. It comes in, comes in very handy, um, useful. It's been one of those types of features that uh, we kind of would have liked to have, should have had for some time, but it's nice that we've got that now, right? Giving the information. Um, our customers out there, our technicians, our users out there give us good feedback and we incorporate that in our next rollouts. So when we're always improving and making updates um, based on our clients' uh, requests. 